Hello everyone, Mehdi Murtazavi here and today I'm going to talk about change of enthalpy and internal energy of real gases. So uh, we classify gases into either an ideal gas or a real gas. An ideal gas is a gas that follows PV equal to RT and real gases are basically gases that are not following that. So real gases happen, uh, occur, uh, real condition let's say occurs at high pressures. So we know that gases at low pressure behave ideally. By saying behaving ideally, uh, we simply mean they follow the equation PV equal to RT. So any gas that follows this, we call it an ideal gas. And it has nothing to do with the uh, species of the gas. Uh, oxygen in so, uh, certain condition can behave as an ideal gas in another condition condition uh, can behave as a real gas which is different from an ideal gas so we know that u h c p and c v of uh, ideal gases depend on temperature Okay, but the question is, how about the properties of gases at high pressure? Basically, the gases that are not behaving ideally. That's the question. So, how about properties of gases at high pressure? How can we find those properties? Because in some problems, in some systems, uh, we may uh, need to find the properties of gases at high pressure or the condition that is not uh, a real gas. I'm sorry, uh, the, the condition that is not an ideal gas. So earlier in uh, our thermodynamic one, we learned about uh, the Z, which was the compressibility factor. So we learned that PV is equal to ZRT for real gases and in that case Z is not equal to 1. So we were using a chart to obtain the Z value and in that chart we had Z on the vertical axis and reduced pressure on the horizontal axis and the value of Z was changing from let's say 0.2 all the way to 1. So let's say if this is Z equal to 1 we had different curves for different uh, reduced temperatures and we were finding the, the reduced pressure, the reduced temperature TR and we were locating that point and based on that we are reading the Z value. So this is what we did back in Thermo 1. So basically for example here we were reading the PR value, we were calculating the TR and we realized that for example this is the correct curve and then we horizontally went to the left and read the Z value. Okay, so enthalpy change of real gases can be obtained based on an ideal gas. So if the title is enthalpy change of real gases. So this is the title. So in this way, uh, we know that enthalpy of real gases depend on uh, temperature and pressure. So in real gases, enthalpy depends on T and P. So H for real gases is a function of temperature and pressure. Okay. So earlier we learned that H2 minus H1 is equal to Cp dt from T1 to T2 plus integral from P1 to P2 and we have V minus T partial V partial T for constant pressure d. P. So this is what we learned earlier.
So this equation is in fact coming from our discussion about enthalpy and this equation that I just wrote comes from here. So you should have these notes and exactly the same equation we have it here. Okay, so based on this equation, if we have an isothermal process, then dt is equal to zero. So the entire first term will be zero. Likewise, if we have a constant pressure, the entire second term is going to be zero. Okay, so for an isothermal process, and isothermal me, uh, being a constant temperature, basically, dt is equal to zero. There is no change in temperature. Likewise, for a constant pressure process, our dp is equal to zero. So let's, let's utilize this fact and also, let's show uh, two pressures that are pretty high and the gas is behaving ideally at those pressures. So I'll get back to the dome. Here we have temperature on the vertical axis, pressure on the horizontal axis. So let's say this is our dome. And I have two constant pressure lines. So these are high pressures, basically. And let's call this one P1. Let's call this one P2. And my goal is to find uh, the difference between enthalpies between 1 and 2. Okay. So let's say this is the process that we have from one to two, but P1 and P2 are at high pressure that the gas is not behaving ideally. So let's say at P1 and P2, the gas is not behaving ideally, okay? Now, in order to find the difference between them, uh, so let's say one and two applies to this correlation. So basically we are dealing with a real gas and we wanna know what is H2 minus H1 in this particular case. In order to be able to find that, I am going to draw another constant pressure line, but that constant pressure line is at a very low pressure, okay? And I do that in purpose because I wanna get some help from a low pressure which the gas is behaving ideally at that pressure. So let's say this is the third constant pressure line. Let me call that P naught, okay? And P naught can be chosen to be very low or basically zero because we want to make sure the gas is behaving ideally, okay? So P naught is chosen at a low pressure so the gas behaves ideally okay so let me show you what is happening in this dome let me continue this constant pressure line and once again my goal is to obtain h2 minus h1 and in order to do that, instead of starting from point one and ending at state two, I am going horizontally to this low pressure. So basically I'm following the red process. First, I go from one to this point and I call this point one star. Okay, so that star indicates that the point is, or the gas is behaving ideally at this particular point. The reason behind that is this pressure, P naught, is a very low pressure. So this is P naught here. Let me erase this P naught from here. So I need some space. So once again, I have three constant pressure lines. 
the pressure of this constant pressure line is P1. The pressure of this constant pressure line is P2. The pressure of this constant pressure line is P0. So my goal is to start from state 1 and end at state 2. Instead of following the blue line, I'm starting from point 1. I go to point 1 star and the gas is behaving ideally at 1 star. Then I go from 1 star to 2 star right here. And once again, from 1 to 2 star, I'm at a constant pressure. So dp is equal to 0. And finally, I go from 2 star to 2. So this is the processes that I follow. So instead of the blue process, I follow three separate processes. This is the first process. This is the second process. And this is the third process. Okay, And I do that in purpose. The reason I do that is because you will see if I get into this equation, then for two of these two processes, my dt is equal to zero because temperature is the vertical axis. And for this process from one star to two star, my dp is equal to zero. So I'm simplifying that. Okay, so I would say my next step is developing H2 minus H1. So H2 minus H1 based on this uh, diagram is going to be H2 minus H2 star plus H2 star minus H1 star plus H1 star minus H1. Okay. So instead of once again going from 1 to 2 directly, I go through those red process. Let me call this one equation 1 star. Or let's say just equation 1. Because we already have a star. I want to make it separate. So this is equation 1. And once again, this star that you see here, that represents ideal gas. So this means ideal gas. So the gas is behaving ideally on P0 uh, constant pressure line. Okay, so I can write H2 minus H2 star in a simple way. So going from 2 star to 2 gives me dt equal to 0. Through this process, dt is equal to 0 because temperature is the vertical axis, right? because temperature is the vertical axis. So because of that, I would say my H2 minus H2 star is zero plus P2 star to P2. And then I would have V minus T partial V partial T constant pressure dP, okay? So this equation, in case you're wondering where is this coming from, this is coming from here. Now here dt is zero, right? And then I still have the second term. All right. So I can simplify this into P naught to P2. Instead of this, I just write P naught and then I keep the bracket which is V minus T partial V partial T constant pressure dP. So that was the first term that I had on the left hand, on the right hand side. Let me do the second term and the second term is this one. So H2 star minus H1 star. But in the second term, we are going from this point to this point, so from one star to two star. And in this process, we are following a constant pressure line. So basically our dp is zero. So that will be basically going from t1 to t2. And by the way, t1 star, t2 star, cp dt, and plus zero. So this zero is for dp equal to zero. But because Cp is a function of temperature, I write it as going from T1 to T2. Cp naught as a function of temperature, dt. So T1 
T1 star is equal to T1. Look at that. T1 star, like the temperature at this point, is equal to temperature at this point because both of them are on a horizontal line and the vertical axis is my temperature. Same thing between 2 star and 2. Both of them are at the same temperature. Okay? All right. So, let me do the very last term that I have on the right hand side. So, so far I have done this. I have done this. Let me do the very last one. But again, for the very last one, we are going from 1 to 1 star. And look what happens from 1 to 1 star. Going from 1 to 1 star, the temperature doesn't change. So, dt is 0. So, I will only have the second term. So, my h1 star minus h1 is 0 plus going from P1 to P1 star V minus T partial V partial T for a constant pressure dP okay and we are uh, keeping the temperature constant here so temperature is equal to T1 so that will be equal to I can change the order of pressure, okay, and use a negative sign, so that will be equal to negative going from P0 to P1, I just changed the order because P1 star is equal to P0 in the previous diagram, and P1 goes here, and then I keep the bracket V minus T partial V partial T constant pressure D p okay just keep in mind that p1 star is equal to p naught so we call h minus h star we call this one enthalpy departure enthalpy this is what we call we also remember from ideal gas uh, law that PV is equal to RT so this is for ideal gas but for a real gas we have a Z term here in fact you can even say for re for ideal gas we have PV equal to ZRT but speaking of an ideal gas Z is equal to 1 so we usually don't even write that but speaking of a real gas we need to account for this Z value which at this time we know how to obtain that we did lots of practice back in term 1 so let me play with partial v partial t for a constant pressure because i already have this one here so based on that i can say v is equal to zrt over pressure okay so let me see if i can simplify the entire bracket but before that let me see partial what partial v partial t is partial v partial t for a constant pressure is going to be equal to I need to get the derivative of this and that will be ZR over P plus RT over P partial Z partial T at a constant pressure okay so based on this I can rewrite this bracket okay so this bracket bracket I would write it here the bracket is going to be V minus T partial V partial T for the constant pressure so instead of V volume I will have ZRT over P that will be ZRT over P minus instead of this partial V partial T, I will have this one here. So it's going to be T multiplied by ZRP plus RT over pressure partial Z partial T constant pressure. So basically what I did, instead of partial V partial T for the constant pressure, I had the entire thing here. So this goes into here. 
and that shows up here basically okay so that goes into here all right so Now I can simplify this in fact, you know what? I can simplify this ZRT with this ZRT over pressure and that gives me the entire thing is equal to negative R temperature squared over pressure partial Z partial T at a constant pressure. Okay, now I can rewrite h star minus h based on 0 to p okay r t squared over pressure partial z partial t at a constant pressure dp now in case you're asking where is this coming from in fact this is the the continuation of this line so this line will be continued here so here I had h star minus h here I have h star minus h and here I had negative uh, integral from p naught to p1 and because there was a negative here and I had a negative here I ended up with a positive thing here so maybe I can just draw a line all the way from here to here Okay, now, as I said, we call H star minus H enthalpy departure. I think here I mentioned that H minus H star enthalpy departure, but in fact it should be H star minus H enthalpy departure. So correct your notes. It should be H star minus H enthalpy departure so also previously we learned that TR or the reduced temperature is temperature over the critical temperature right so that means I can write this temperature based on the reduced temperature multiplied by T critical temperature this is T critical CR Likewise, the reduced pressure, PR, was pressure divided by the critical pressure, okay? So that means I can write pressure based on the reduced pressure multiplied by the critical pressure. So finally, after all these discussions, I can develop an equation for uh, ZH. Let me just write it here. So ZH will be equal to H star bar minus H bar at a constant temperature over RU T critical. So we are defining that this way and we call ZH enthalpy departure factor. So this is called enthalpy departure factor and we have a figure for that. And that is defined based on this correlation and that is equal to T reduced square, so uh, reduced temperature squared multiplied by the integral from zero to re the reduced pressure partial Z partial TR at constant pre at pressure of PR reduced pressure D ln p r okay frankly this is a very complicated equation and there is no way to solve it by hand so we have two options we can either solve it numerically with the use of computer or we have graphs to give of give us this zh so this zh as i said the name is enthalpy departure factor
the value of zh is given at figure a29 so there is no need to do this equation we never do this equation to obtain zh we are just using figure a29 from our tables okay so if we go to that figure definitely it will solve a problem but an example problem but this is how the figure looks like the figure has zh on the vertical axis and here we have uh, reduced pressure and there are different curves and those curves are tr constant curves or uh, constant reduced temperature curves so we will definitely do some problems for that but the point is we will need this zh to be able to find the difference of enthalpy in real gases okay so you remember we had this equation one now i'm going to rewrite this equation one in a practical way that we can actually use to find the difference in enthalpy in real gases so that equation one gives me two equations and it is completely up to you which one to use depending on the unit that you have so in one equation we have h bar 2 minus h bar 1 being equal to h bar 2 minus h bar 1 of ideal gas minus ru t critical zh2 minus zh1 okay so this ZH is exactly what we had before. This is enthalpy departure factor. Enthalpy departure factor, which comes from figure A29 of your textbook. Same thing with ZH1, both of them. RU is the universal gas constant, 8.314 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. You do not need to memorize that. It is given in table A1. This is the critical temperature. So basically, this equation says the change in enthalpy for a real gas is the change in enthalpy for an ideal gas minus this value. Okay. The other equation that we probably use even more is the same thing but without the bars. And that is H2 minus H1 equal to H2 minus H1 of ideal gas minus R T critical ZH2 minus ZH1. So these two equations are in fact exactly similar to each other with two differences. One difference is the fact that here we have bars and here we do not have bars. The second difference is here we have R, which is gas constant, but here we had RU, which is universal gas constant. So this RU is a constant uh, value or constant number for all gases, 8.314 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. But here this R is different from gas to gas. So both of them are also coming from table A1. But for depending on the gas, you need to read this R value. But if you go with this equation, that's a fixed number. The other point is about the difference between these two equations. So this H bar is kilojoule per kilo mole, but this H is kilojoule per kilogram. So the unit here is kilojoule per kilo mole, but this H is kilojoule per kilogram. Finally, let me show you figure A29 that I was referring to. So this is how the figure 29 looks like. Uh, sorry for the reflection. So first of all, the figure reads, the figure title reads, generalized enthalpy departure chart. Okay. And these two figures are exactly the same. The only difference is the one in top the range of PR is from 0.1 to 30, okay? 
but the one in the bottom is for smaller range of PR starting from 0 to 0.3 now what you want to do as before uh, you want to find your reduced pressure which is pressure divided by the critical pressure so you know where the horizontal value is also you want to find the reduced temperature which is temperature divided by the critical temperature so these green curves they are giving us TR maybe this is too small to see but this is it, it, it will be out of focus I turned off the autofocus but this is TR basically you definitely have your table so don't hesitate to look at your table so this is TR and we are looking at different reduced temperature values so as before you want to find your PR value you want to find your TR value and horizontally go to the left and read ZH so this is ZH here and this is the equation that you have you already have this equation and also this equation all right so we will do one example for sure so I will add the fact that figure a 29 is generalized enthalpy departure chart and it basically looks like what I showed you earlier so the one that I was trying to show you here is in fact A29 well you saw a better one but this is the concept the vertical axis is ZH and the horizontal axis is PR the reduced pressure so this reduced pressure is pressure divided by the critical pressure and this is the reduced temperature which is temperature divided by the critical temperature all right so this figure is used to determine the deviation of the enthalpy of a gas at a given pressure and temperature from the enthalpy of an ideal gas at the same temperature because in ideal gas the enthalpy is only a function of temperature in real gas the enthalpy is a function of pressure and temperature but speaking of an ideal gas the enthalpy only depends on temperature 